So the next speaker is uh, Gerard Sabona, and he's going to talk about session based type checking for Elixir modules using Elixir ST and this joint work with Adrian Francalanta. Thank you. So as, as I said, this is joint work with Adrian Francalanta. And we recently published this work in a journal paper, paper JLAM. Um, so what I will be talking about is our tool, Elixir ST, and we will see how we integrated a session type within an existing language, Elixir. So first of all, Elixir uh, was created around uh, 10, uh, 11 years ago by Jose Valim. And, uh, it's gaining popularity. As you can see in the Stack Overflow developer server, survey it was listed as the second most loved or admired language after, after the, the Rust language. And uh, so this is a dynamically typed functional language. And it is built on top of the Erlang ecosystem. So because of this, it can make use of, of features provided by by the Erlang language. And one of these is the concurrency via the actor, the actor model. So uh, that means that an Elixir can spawn processes, and each process can, can talk to another via message passing. And since actors are, are very lightweight, you can have uh, thousands of them, for example, running at the same time. So currently, Elixir provides most of its uh, checking uh, at runtime. Um, despite this, even the compiler and uh, some of some other tools, for example the dialyzer, um, they are able to catch some uh, some errors related to, to the functional aspect of, of the language. For example, if you call a function with uh, with a wrong number of parameters, then the compiler will will complain. However, uh, the like the Elixir core team, the the ones that uh, maintain the language, uh, including uh, Jose Valim, the creator, uh, they are trying to move towards a, a statically typed language, um, while obviously maintaining the current like like backwards compatibility with current Elixir programs. Um, so they even released very recently uh, the design of a a gradual type system where they covered most of the, uh, the functional part of the language. Um, however, in their design, they didn't consider, like they are not considering the, the concurrent aspect of it. So they don't care, uh, they don't check, for example, the messages um, being sent and received. Um, so that, this is the part that, that our tool, Elixir ST, will target, the, the concurrent aspect of, of the language. So we target one specific pattern. So consider like one common design is uh, when you have a server that offers some services. In this case, you have F1 up to Fn. And you have a client that wants to, to use the server. So what happens is the client sends a request. But rather than the server handling it directly, uh, the server spawns a handler as a, as a separate process, and then the handler runs the required functions, for example, F1. And then in this case, the, the, the handler can interact via message passing with, with the client. Um, again, if there are any other clients, um, since the server is free, it can accept further requests and pre creates other, other handlers. Um, we tar as I said, we target specifically this pattern. Um, what you see here is, the, is what happens like, at runtime. Like, however, when you, are, like, when you look at it at a, from a static point of view, like at compile time, you might only have the code for the server, because the clients might be made up from different parts that you don't have access to. So because of this, we will only focus on the, on the server. Um, so, like programs will be composed uh, as modules, and uh, uh, each module will have some functions, 
like we saw earlier, F1 to F1, that the that clients can can use. Rather not use directly, but use them when they are running. And uh, internally, the functions, the public functions, can make use or offload some of their work, but into some other private functions. So in this case, um, the functions G1 up to G5 can can be used by F1 up to Fn. Um, now, uh, the important thing about this is the the interaction that happens between the function, the process running F1, for example, and the, the client. And uh, the, this interaction follows a notion of, uh, of protocol. Um, for example, the, the F1 here must follow some protocol, S1, and on the other side, the client um, must also observe a, a compatible protocol. In this case, as one bar. Um, currently, in Elixir, there's no way to, to specify these protocols. So what we do is, uh, by uh, our tool, Elixir ST, we um, we provide a way to write them to link a function to a protocol, and also to to check them, to type check the, these functions. So let's consider a, a simple example of a, of a counter system. Here you have two processes, a server and, and the user, where the server keeps some running total. And on the other side, the, the user can, for example, either increment the total or read the current value or else terminate the session. Uh, this can be, the server part can be implemented as this module counter. Uh, where you can see two, two functions. So there's a function called service that it takes two parameters, the, the PID of the user and also the, the total value. Um, so what happens is the process waits until it blocks, until it receives a message. And this message has to either be of the form of increment, uh, it can also be read or, or stop. So if it receives increment, then um, it increments the total via the recursion. If it receives read, then it calls the private function read, where the server sends back the current value to the to the user. Uh, and if it receives stop, then it just uh, does nothing. So if you look at it, um, you can see that implicitly it's following a sort of protocol. So this protocol can be written as this counter session type, where you have um, a typical uh, binary session type, which is uh, the branching type, where it can either receive increment with a payload of type number, where it um, and then it recurses. Uh, it can also receive read, and then sends back a value of type number and then recurses, or it, or it can also receive uh, stop before terminating the session. So this is fine. However, um, what happens if... Um, so this compiles and everything, but if the, the developer makes a mistake in, in one of these messages, um, for example, it sends a different message than the one expected. Um, so the question is, what happens then? So what happens is that the program will compile successfully. However, when it is running, the, the process will either crash or it will just block. So in this case, consider some examples where I have where I commented out the, the read branch. So on the other side, you can have a client that uh, is expecting the server to, to process read messages. Uh, however, in this case, it does not. So, so it violates the protocol. Um, another example is, is you send the incorrect payload type. For example, you send hello, which is a string instead of sending a number. This is also a violation. Or you can send uh, some random messages, which may also influence the, the, the execution. 
So how can we add the session types to our functions? So if you have a function, um, you c we can add them using the using annotations. These two annotations, the add session and add dual. So via the add session, you can create a labeled session type directly. Or with the dual, you can just reference the dual of some, some session type. Um, if you have a private function, since it will be called from other functions, you don't have to annotate them because it will inherit the protocol. Um, why did we choose annotations? So in, in Elixir, it's very common to use these to, um, to add information. For example, the, the compiler. Um, you can use the add doc to add um, functional information to the documentation. Or uh, the dialyzer, for example, it provides the, the add spec to add type information to the functions. Um, okay, so we integrated it directly within the, the compilation pipeline of Elixir. So typically you have some Elixir source code, um, which then compiles into the Elixir, the Elixir abstract syntax tree. Um, then the macros are expanded for being converted into um, Erlang abstract format and core Erlang before ending up as a beam bytecode. So what we do is we take the beam bytecode, uh, from it we take the Elixir AST with the macros expanded, and then from this you can take the annotations and compare them to the, to the functions. So I want to give a, a short demonstration of our tool. Is it too small, or, or should I? Is it better? OK, so here we have the, the counter module that, that we saw earlier. Um, you have the, server, the service and the read functions that I, that I explained before. Um, but for convenience, I added another function called user that, acts as, that will act as the user part of our session. So what the user does is, uh, it sends, it takes, first of all, it takes the PID of the server, and it sends uh, two messages here to increment first by five, and then increment by two, and then it sends uh, a request to read uh, to the server before, uh, and then afterwards it waits to receive the value, outputting this value, and finally it requests to, to stop the, the session. So, uh, this is running without, um, without session types. So I just want to, to run this. So I open the Elixir uh, shell. Um, so I want to initiate a session that runs uh, on one side that runs the service. that takes, uh, that sets the total value as zero. And on the other side, I wanted to start the process running the, the user function. So first of all, this compiles correctly because there weren't any, any issues. And now I can also uh, run this. And as you can see, it runs well because it tells you that the total value is, uh, is 7, and then it terminates. Um, however, if I make some mistake, for example, I send, uh, instead of sending 2, I send the string 2. Then I will try to recompile, and as you can see, it compiles correctly. However, if I create the same session that we saw earlier, um, at runtime, we run into some issues. So we want, we want, we'll use our tool to, to catch these kinds of issues um, before, beforehand. So to do this, 
I will link our library, our tool, and then I will add the the session type counter um, before the, uh, I will link it to the service. So when I have this session type counter, it's the same one as before. So now the service function will be following this uh, session type. And I also want the other side, the user, to follow the, the dual of the same session type. So now, if I try to uh, to make some mistakes, if I make some mistakes, for example, the one that you just saw, um, and I save it since the language server like compiles the the file, uh, it immediately shows up some shows up these uh, these issues. So it shows that on line 26, um, it has an incorrect payload type because it expected um, binary, which is which is a string. Um, another example would be to to send the a random message, for example, you send the message hello. This is also incorrect because um, hello doesn't match with any of the of the choice type. Because as we said, you can either send stop, read, or increment, and hello doesn't match with with any of them. Um, or you can forget to send some messages. So if you forget to send the read then you will get an error because you try to receive before requesting to read. So this is also um, a violation. Okay, so I return back to the presentation. So I want to uh, um, analyze it, show you a bit uh, the formal part of our tool now. So first of all, if you recall this diagram, when you have a function, you have a module that has several functions, as we saw, and uh, the function has a somebody, uh, somebody of type of the somebody, the body of the function, the body of the function will be a term t. So a term can take the form of an expression, function calls, for example, branching via case can also be send or receive. So to type this, to type the, <coughs> the terms, um, as I mentioned before, there are existing uh, type systems. However, the ones that exist, or at least um, the ones proposed, only consider the functional part of this language. So they don't consider the, the messages being sent or received. So what, we, what, our, what our aim is, is to expand on this and handle both the functional and, but more importantly, the, the, the side effects, like the messages being sent and received. And uh, to do this, we, we use this typing judgment, which says that if you have a, ter a term T uh, of type T that follows some initial session type S, um, when it finishes executing, then it will end up with some, some session type S prime. Yeah, this only works under two, two assumptions, the, the function type environment, um, delta, which is used when, when you recurse, and, you also, and we also have the, the typical variable type environment, gamma. And finally, we make use of some use a form of dependent types uh, to include the dual PID so that we can know that we are sending messages to the correct uh, address. So I picked one example, the, the receive branch. Um, to type this, we just, this, uh, I think it's typical, so we just have to compare that the labels match the ones offered by the branching session type. And we also have to make sure that the patterns that we offer, that we have in the receive construct, are uh, contain only simple, simple types. So they have to be either variables or or tuples. So this way, we exhaust all the the possible uh, pattern options. Um, from these, we um, extract the variable types 
using this pattern typing judgment. And then we just have to type check the, the continuation TI against the uh, continuation session types SI. And then all of these uh, um, terms must end up with some common, common session type S prime. Okay, so I presented like the tool and a bit about its type system, but how can we be, like make sure that it it works, or how can we validate it? So our aim is to present the session fidelity property, uh, but to do that we have to present the operational semantics. So here, if you have a, a process executing term T, uh, when it transitions to a new state T prime, um, it can it will create some, some side effect. It can either be some side effect the alpha that we call action. So this action can either be an external one, an external action. That means a message is being sent. In this case, it sends a message or it receives some other message. Um, however, you can have some internal action tau. So if we look at one example, the, the receive construct. In this case, if you have a receive construct that receives a message labeled L with some payload V tilde, and what happens is we compare the, the patterns from the branches to the, to the values using the batch function so that we extract the, the substitutions required. So that when this transitions, you end up with TJ, um, or some of its variables are, are substituted. So this leads to the, to the session fidelity property, which says that uh, whenever you have a well-typed term T against uh, some session type S, and this, th this term transitions to, to a new state T prime with some action alpha, then there are two, two options. So if the action alpha is an input action, so the process receives a message, then we have to check that the alpha is valid. And if it is, then we know that the, that the new term is, remains well typed. Um, on the other hand, if uh, you have a different action, we immediately know that the, that the term T prime is, uh, is well typed. Another property, the last property is the a form of progress. It says that if you have some term T, which is well typed, then either the term is a value, or else it, it is able to, to transition to some, to some T prime using a valid action. So to conclude, um, so currently you only handle two processes at a time. So uh, it would be nice to be able to handle multiple ones. So one way to do it would be to, to use the multi-party session types. Uh, but another, maybe, maybe more suitable way would be to, to handle, to use intuitionistic session types because when you have actors that spawn other actors, uh, you might end up with, with some tree. Um, another option would be to, another avenue would be to process, to handle process failure and supervisors, and also some other elixir behaviors, such as gen server and agents, because all of these are, are critical elixir uh, functions. And the last thing would be to, to be able to account for resource usage and cost to be able to, for example, keep track of how many messages are transferred. Uh, to conclude, uh, so I presented this tool. It was created in Elixir for Elixir, for a core part of Elixir. Um, I constructed an operation in semantics and, the, and also a session typing system for the Elixir subset. And we showed that it observes a form of session fidelity and, and progress. So thank you.
Uh, I have a question. So, why is technical about the typing? Um, about your typing uh, uh, judgments. Uh, so, why do you have this pre-type and post-type? Is it because you need to type semicolon or? Yes, because you have the the sequence, the sequencing. So, that's part of it, and then the remainder has to be done by the by the remaining term. Uh, and then the, the other question, very quickly. Uh, do you? Uh, it was about. I saw your example, right? And your example is just a request to reply. And uh, and the question is is just that I've also been able to to see many examples. Uh, do you have something that is a bit more complex, where the type is a little bit uh, more structured? Uh, I mean, the real life, uh, uh, like applications, where, where so, they yeah, don't we, use this request reply. So, uh, in the paper, we have some some other example that uses. Um, I think it's a flight. Uh, uses a flight API, so it checks like flights and and stuff. And part of it is type checked using session type. But one issue that, that uh, at least I found was um, the, t the session type increases quite a lot. So if you have a, a complex protocol, a complex indirection, uh, it gets a bit large. But uh, you can. Uh, um, in the paper, it's linked. But I, I don't think I have it open right now. But uh, I think there are. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. I I think actually following up on that, it's natural deduction rather than se uh, sequence calculus, Marco. Yeah, I, I think so, right? Uh, I also have a question on the typing judgment. Um, so for the context, no, no, the slide you just were at, yeah. Uh, so gamma, is it a structural context or a linear context? So it's not linear because um, Variables can be used multiple times. Okay. So we don't care about linearity. Okay. Uh, in this case. So uh, that's kind of what I gathered from your explanation. But then, how do you account for the state changes? Don't you need some form of linearity? And I think related to that is maybe I should first ask for the W on the turnstile. You said that's, uh, as I if I understood correctly, that you know it's a recipient. Yes. Yes. So we handle the the dual. Like the address of the dual kind of sep separately from from the variable, so we try to to not change it, so that we will know who will be receiving the. Uh, so the, so, the uh, I I guess a related question because I'm not quite sure, but I can otherwise take it offline. Uh, are there any channels at runtime? And sorry, are there any channels at runtime or? So. Or do you have like those yeah. recipients? Are they just static notions? So since we are using Elixir, we're not using channels at all. Okay. Like we're only using not the full actor model, but part of the actor model. So we can only send to some process address. I see. And that so that's address is statically known. Yeah. Okay. Not statically Got it. Known, like the variable of it, because it, yeah. it will be known at runtime. Ah. But uh, the one holding. The address is statically known. Actually. Yeah, okay, yeah. makes sense. Yes. Okay, thank you. It was a very nice talk, by the way. Thank you. <coughs> um, yeah, thank you. So this follows up a bit, I think, on, on Stephanie's question. So, so you're dealing with mailboxes rather than channels. Um, and you said right at the end that you're, you're dealing with sort of one client, one server. Uh, so this is what enables you to really use a session type because you're just looking at the sequences of messages from one client to the server. You're not worrying about the fact that there may be several, several clients sending communications into the, into the server's mailbox. But can you... So, okay, so the first question is, um, so does, you, does your type checker check that you have this situation where there's only one, you know, one pair of processes interacting? So do you, if you write... If you write two clients with the same server, do you, do you get a, a so, static type error? Um, so, since spawning the session is not part of the, the type system, we kind of do not check for it. But we assume that um, you only have like a process and it's dual. So the um, 
just like in the beginning. Yes, exactly, exactly. So, so would it also be the case that, so in this example you've got a, a server and a client, so is, is it also the case that say that client one can't also be a client of some different server at the same time because then client one would be receiving messages from two different servers and they wouldn't be described by a single no, session type? With we do not consider for like for a tree right now, for example, like a client con connecting to two handlers. Like okay. we, do, we do not consider that. Okay. Just to consider a single interaction between two processes. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the talk. Actually, um, probably the previous questions asked my questions. So. So you, you don't have channels, so that's why you're not bothered about linearity, but what you give up is that there's no interleaving, m multiple sessions or interleaving of sessions within a function, is that right? Exactly, no, no okay. we, we assume that there are no interleavings. Okay, is that something that you want to do, need to do, or is that totally fine as it is for Elixir? Or? For the simple kind of um, design, it's fine, but it would be nice to be able to handle larger more complex systems. Do you have any ideas about how to do that while still uh, bypassing lin linearity? Or? Uh, we're not, uh, I mean, okay, sure. uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Uh, <coughs> Otherwise, I have a quick question, but maybe in, meanwhile the next speaker, if they are in the room. Okay, surprise. <laughs> uh, so maybe the next speaker can start setting up if they are here. Or is it a remote talk? Okay.